Shalom and welcome to the City of Peace. This is Jerusalem. Here we are at uh, what's known as the Spring of Elisha and in the book of uh, Second Kings here what it tells us, Elisha went out to the spring. All around Jericho you'll find different artifacts. Here we've got one of the slinger missiles. Here we are at the garden too, as you can see behind me in the background. So this is believed to be the place. So this is the entrance to the synagogue. Let's go inside. auditoriums, go for the big, try and reach the important. Here we are at the lowest point on earth. We are here in the Jordan Valley and we're at the entrance to the desert. Here we are at the desert oasis of Engedi. This is where David uh, used to have his stronghold when he was hiding from King Saul. It's the oasis in the desert, uh, the desert of Judea. Here is where David hid from Saul. Here is where he would bring his sheep to drink at the water. Here is where he would know about because as a shepherd, he would bring his sheep to drink at the water here. So En Gedi is all the way through the Old Testament. Ezekiel gave the prophecy that the fishermen would, would spread their nets here at En Gedi in the millennium to come. We also read about it as being allotted to the tribe of Judah by Joshua. It's also in the Song of Songs, uh, where the Beloved is described as uh, a cluster of henna blossoms from En Gedi. It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place to be with God. It's a beautiful place where God's protection can be understood. He leads us beside quiet waters and He restores our soul. This is En Gedi. Moving on from En Gedi, we traveled north through other areas of the desert along the shore of the Dead Sea, remembering the Old Testament stories in Genesis of Sodom and Gomorrah and the destruction that had happened in that area. We moved northwards and came to places that were more familiar to us from the New Testament. We came to the site of Qumran, the place where people were preparing themselves for the arrival of Messiah. And in the New Testament, it's in the desert that the way was prepared. Jesus himself came into the desert and stayed there for 40 days. And it's in the desert that Jesus was tempted by the devil. The desert is the beginning of the story of much of the New Testament. Here we are in the desert. Yeah? yeah. Would you all agree we're in the desert? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me read the beginning of the gospel. Okay. I'll read uh, Mark's version. Mark chapter 1. The beginning of the good news. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus the Messiah the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, in the desert, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee came and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Before the gospel of Jesus is started, the whole nation came to a desert community to get baptized in preparation for the coming of the Messiah. That's what the Gospels tell us. Now it says they were baptized in the Jordan River. The Jordan is just over there. It's about a two hour walk from here to the Jordan River. And they, John the Baptist baptized on the west side of the Jordan. 
Do you know, he did that because according to the understanding of Moses and the Israelites, Joshua himself, they came from the west side and they went through the Jordan. It was, a, it was a metaphor of people inheriting the, premises of, uh, the promises of God. The Jordan is just over there. You can see the Jordan Valley just behind us. So there was a community of people in the desert who were baptizing in preparation for the coming of the Messiah. Now this community here, that is exactly what they were doing. Now when this community was first uh, archaeologically discovered, there were lots of theories about what this community is. Some, some referred to them as the Essenes, according to Flavius Josephus. Some people said they were ascetics, like Hasidic Jews. There are lots of theories about who these people were. Now you've just seen a video suggesting that John the Baptist was here. I put to you, it is, I think he almost certainly was here in some capacity. Because this is the community that were baptizing in the desert. They had a very simple life. They had a very simple diet. They, according to their writings, they turned away from the temple legalistic structure of the Sadducees. They turned away from the priesthood to come and live here in the desert. Now that's exactly what John the Baptist did. He was born into the priesthood. His father was a priest. Zachariah was a priest. He left all that behind and came out here in the desert. Now, not, not only do I think John the Baptist was here, some of the early uh, people who found the Dead Sea Scrolls suggested perhaps John the Baptist may have even been the leader of this community at one time. Now, that's conjecture. It's speculation. We can't prove that. But this is the main desert community, a day's walk from Jerusalem, that did baptize people. And we know from the Dead Sea Scrolls that were discovered in 1947, 1948, that they were preparing themselves for the coming of Messiah. And then Jesus came. So we may be in the same spot where this community was originally based. And then because of the numbers of people, went over to the Jordan, perhaps, and baptized there. Now we know Anon and Bethany beyond Jordan, over on that side is where they baptized. But this is the main desert community. And if the whole people from Jerusalem came down to be baptized, there had to be some community in the desert that they could connect with. We're talking hundreds of thousands of people. So it couldn't have just been a tree over in the valley where they all met. There must have been some facility. This may be the facilities. And we know from the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls that they found here, that the people were reading primarily the prophet Isaiah. Prepare in the desert the way for the Lord. And when they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, they found a totally intact, almost totally intact, scroll of Isaiah, which was amazing because the only previous scroll that we had was from the Mas Masoretic texts, which was uh, almost a thousand years after Isaiah, longer. And they found a scroll from a thousand years older than the earliest copy of the prophet Isaiah that we had. I've seen that copy in the shrine of the book in the Israel Museum. I've seen the actual copy of the, uh, the scroll. And guess what? It was almost exactly the same. It hadn't changed. The words were the same. Slight textual differences, but generally speaking, it was the same text. The, the prophecy had not changed. And so we found those here. They were found in 1947, 1948, and they're still finding them over the years. So I think we are here in the desert at the beginning of our tour so that we can prepare ourselves for the coming of Messiah. We can prepare for what Jesus has for us. Amen.